So previously we've looked at uh, Google Plus and we've looked at Twitter and I want to come back briefly to uh, mention two things about both networks. Uh, you can do this if you'd like, but if not, just follow along for a moment. I've logged into my one of my clients' uh, Google Plus pages, and what I want to show you is that uh, this is to help you answer the question, is this worth it? Is this working? Um, which is to check your statistics, your insights, your analytics, whatever keyword. Can you pass that to the back, please? Everyone needs to... Yeah. Everyone needs to sign that. Uh, so <clears throat> this is uh, to check, is it being effective? Am I reaching an audience? And so with Google, with a Google Plus page, you get that by um, logging into your Google Plus page, your business page, and then you've got on um, the menu on the side there the different screens under my business this gives you the overview so this is an overview here where I can see more details so far there's been a thousand percent increase in views to this page now it is uh, it is relatively new so 1000 sounds amazing but you do have to couch it <clears throat> uh, it, it has been 5,000 and a half views and so I'm looking at the my business screen here and if I go to view insights I can get a little bit more data so you see the page was created uh, at the beginning of the month and there's been some activity at the beginning there and then a little bit of activity and then a spike in activity so here I can clearly see activity has happened because uh, we've put in the effort we've done the social in social media and you can check your statistics, your insights, analytics, whatever the platform calls it, your graphs. So you can check how well you're doing. And this clearly shows here with, uh, with the sheer fact of actually using the network itself that gives you activity. So it says um, total Google Plus page posted photo. What have people looked at? In total, in this time period, 5,538 views, 26 specifically of the page, but notice most of the activities on the actual posts and the photos, the content. So you have a page, but it's still about the content that you're adding, and that goes to any social network. Yes? What's the difference between post and photo? Because normally there's a photo with a post. Yes, but it does differentiate that of a particular post that is focused on a photo. If you are also doing uh, video posts, it might give you that extra info there. But um, a photo would show up differently than a post, perhaps, if people are searching. So it does differentiate it. What was it that you clicked on to get to that? Once you've logged into your business page, you can go up to the menu and then select My Business. And then you'll see a button that says Insights. So I can say, OK, thir the last 30 days, the last 90 days. Um, so you see a little bit of activity back then, and then some more activity. This is after they uh, they hired us. They were going at it on their own, and we started to develop a strategy, and then started to implement the strategy, and you see that big spike. Obviously, I want that to be constant, to have this much activity as long as possible, and that comes from using it as much as possible. Logging in, ideally once a day, and posting something. If that's too much, once a week is a good goal. If you're only posting something on social media once a month, you're not perhaps using it as effectively as you could. You can cut this down to seven days, and you see little by little there's, a, there's like an echo. There was that big 1800 spike, and then little by little it's trailing down, trending down, so then it'd be ripe to uh, add more activity. Even the lowest level down here is still higher than the highest level before trying to do anything useful. So there's this wave of uh, uh, this after, like these aftershocks that happen after the main activity that ride you to the next crest. The point of all of this, of course, is okay. People are looking at my pictures. People are looking at my at my posts. 
So that's your captive audience. This is what I'm showing. This is the point of the social media, a captive audience. I can look at engagement, which is another important metric. That's another buzzword. Insights, analytics, metrics, statistics. It's all about the data under engagement. Okay, views are great, but actual actions are greater. Um, you might be driving down the street, you see a billboard, and so did 10,000 other people. But then only 10 people actually went through and signed up for that uh, life insurance. So here, within this time period, the numbers are more reduced. 10 total actions. Those 10 broken down into plus ones, comments, or shares. So 10 plus ones. All of the activity in these 30 days has been 10 plus ones. And so, on all the networks, you have the ability to, for those three main actions, a like, a favorite, a plus one. A comment, it's called the same thing basically on all networks, or a share. On Twitter, it's a retweet, but here it's a share, and so forth. So a plus one is the most, um, uh, a plus one is the most, um, um, but what would I call it? In, 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 not in a negative way, but uh, the most transitory, the most throwaway. Someone can give a plus one and move on, and that's it. But then these ones are a little higher. Someone actually has to think a little bit to add a comment, maybe even just like, me too. But at least they took the time to reply. That has a higher status, in my opinion. And then another higher status than just a plus one is the share. Because then what happens there is your, your post um, spreads out to more people. Your post is um, your post is spreading to just not your ten followers, but a hundred other followers. So those are the levels of interaction there, and I wouldn't have known this. Uh, maybe you poked around a little bit in your Google Plus page, but you uh, now you want to look here and see what activity you're having. Definitely, it's synonymous with a like. And what do you do to encourage the the shares? And yeah, I mean, I I get a lot of visibility. I don't necessarily get plus ones or. Well, that's everything we've been talking about so far about writing content that is meaningful and interesting to your users. And today, I'll also introduce a document that'll help you sort of plan and strategize all of those ideas. Yes. Um, going back to the visibility, if it says that the majority of my activity is on photos, but I haven't posted any photos, what would that imply? Well, that doesn't mean that, like, let's say you have 100 photos and they're all getting views. You might have two photos or one photo, and that's getting the views. You probably have at least one photo, which is the photo that's on, it's, that's on the home page of your, of your oh. site. That's also getting okay. viewed. So any photo you've uploaded, even though even just your logo or your background photo, and then lastly, we have here audience. This is an important one also. Audience is, uh, in this case, five new followers. That's good. There's my audience growing. So it, as, as you continue to use this, then you'll get more data. So right now, there, aren't, there isn't enough data to really show demographic information by country and, and, and by segment like that. It says this information will be available when you have at least 200 followers. All right, that's my goal. Engagement. Um, oh, yeah, so we can break this down even more. These are some recent posts and then what activity happened with it. So notice, um, I can see at a glance here some comments and some views at least. Look at that one that had 1,500 um, views. That was, did you know July 2nd was World UFO Day? And so this client, um, their, their main website, SwapDots.com, they're a website that sells personalized wristbands, so great for kids and events and such. You can buy these buttons with pre-made graphics, or you can put your own graphic and you, you kind of trade them. They're, they've got the aspect of collectability also. You know, kids can get the, the different um, buttons and then trade them, and they're interchangeable. Different colors and sizes. This uh, this shop also sells 
uh, stuffed animals, handmade stuffed animals. So we're trying to get activity for that client. We're using uh, Google Plus and, and Pinterest for her. But here, one of the buttons that, that she sells is a fun little uh, alien kind of button. So we posted it over to a, a community. And, and this is true, the July 2nd was World UFO Day. So if you didn't celebrate it, you missed it. <laughs> and um, then that got a lot of views and comments. Now, I would want also follows because then that is your captive audience. But you start somewhere and you build upon it. So what else? One of the last ones that was up here. Which, which would define your child at play more? That one was a, a poll that we put. You can click and it shows you the the um, you know deeper insights. So this is something you do not get with a plain old Google Plus profile. Just like you don't get this with a Facebook personal profile. That's why you want to create a business, a, a Google Plus business page, and a Facebook business page, which is what we'll do today. And it's very easy to accidentally create an account as a personal account and then you don't get any of this data and statistics and other features of a business. Mm -hmm. Is it in all of these when you're looking at the data, should you look at the time and the date of like if it was a weekend or if it was a Monday night or, and what time definitely Definitely, you look at every bit piece of data that it gives you so that you can then form a plan. Because in the beginning, you might have a, a business plan and such, or a marketing plan even, but you still don't know if it will be effective for your audience. So uh, you always, that's why I'm saying once a week, post something. Once a day is better. And if you're, in, if you're, if you're a beginner, you, you want to post as much as you can because then you'll start to see, okay, I was most effective on Saturday. Therefore, I'm going to concentrate perhaps Friday, Saturday, and Sunday or maybe Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Once you know that information, you can target your content and hopefully then it'll give you better results. Yes? Is there a guide or a program for managing your time and, and duties for, say, running a blog or running a social media that says, you know, from here to here you answer emails from this time to this time you respond to inquiries, that sort of thing? I've, seen several, yeah, I've right. seen several blog posts. I haven't exactly seen apps really that do that, uh, but I've seen several posts that people always put. Let me see if I can find one very well, quickly. ideas to manage your time. You know, these are the typical, atypical duties. You know. I often see, well those are books, but I often see um, Typical day, typical day of a social media manager, a day in the life of a social media manager, how to. And that comes over from BufferApp.com. Remember I mentioned Buffer previously. So this might be useful uh, if you do a search. Typical day of a social media manager. Uh, one of the results that appears that seems to be good is um, coming over from the Buffer website. Remember I mentioned Buffer previously. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might want to look at that. Everyone might want to look at that. And this is the life of a particular manager. And for example, this probably breaks it down exactly what you're looking for. Between this time and this time, check your mail. Or between this time and this time, it's lunch, so do this. Thanks. That's one of many opinions. But I'm going to take this on a little highly because it comes from Buffer. And I do recommend that site. All right, so uh, those are the insights, analytics, metrics of Google+. Let me show you then the ones for Twitter, because you can see the same thing on Twitter. Twitter it really has no difference between a business account and a personal account. Uh, but they, uh, either way, it offers you a way to check statistics. So I'm going to log over into my um, company's um, Twitter account. And um, you may or may not have it. The, s the same way I'm going to show you, and if you don't, I'll show you a workaround. I believe you need to have your account active for a little while before you see this, perhaps. But if you log into your Twitter account, and up on the top right where you've got your logo, you should have your logo by now, it's been a week. Um, you click on your logo and you should see analytics. If you don't see that, I'll show you how to get to it in another way in a moment.
But under your logo up on the top right there, click on analytics. How many of you, well, I guess you should log in first. How many of you see it? That's okay if you don't. Um, I forgot to say log in first, didn't I? Uh, so if you log in and then hopefully you see analytics. If you don't see it, you'll see it, you can also see it like this. If you go to the address, analytics.twitter.com. So if you don't see it in the corner there, try to go to the address directly, analytics.twitter.com. It'll ask you to log in if you have not logged in. Did everyone sign in? Does anyone need the pink sheet here to sign in? All right, so analytics.twitter.com. This will give you a lot of detail, I think even better detail than Google+, Plus, uh, which is funny because Google+, Plus is so linked with Google Search, and Google is all about data. But I like the Google, I like the Twitter analytics screen. So you're going to get a bunch of data. I'm not going to go over every single thing. It's very self-explanatory. But here I'm looking at how many tweets within this time period of 28 days, which you can update uh, somewhere. Uh, so in the last 28 days, um, there were 73% less tweets that we tweeted. So that's just telling you, you did, you, you tweeted more, you tweeted less than last time. There's no wrong or right answer about that, really. It's just showing you, this is what you did compared last time. Tweet impressions, that's a good one to look at to see if it improves, which is the views. Your tweets were seen this many times. Now, I don't have 3,000 followers on this account, but again, this is that you might have the audience that you're directly connected to, and then there's an audience outside of it from retweets and search and all of that. So that's gone up 2.7% over the last month. Profile visits, 453 more views to the profile, 72% increase. Followers, um, there's currently 177, and that's been four more than last time. Tweets linking to you. There was a tweet at least one, that linked back to the account. And then it can go on to break it down by month. July, in these in the 30 days of July, the top tweet was this one. And top means by how much activity it's had, or replies and such. There's been a new follower, uh, and that one, that follower itself has 23,000 people. So that account followed this account, and it had a lot of followers, so that's, a, that's good. Uh, there was a mention, so I, I mentioned it myself, the top media tweet. Hey, it was that picture we did last time. I had three favorites. And then breaking it down, there were 11 tweets in this time period, 515 profile visits, 8 new followers, etc. So it'll tell you what was affected. If I go back, there's the, there's the blog post. Um, the blog post that uh, that we wrote just a few days ago. It's already getting up, trending on our top results there. So then we go back to June and same sort of thing. It'll tell you, oops, we lost two followers in that month and then gained four there and so forth. So this is going to break it down month by month in general. And then even more specifically at the top, there's home and there's tweets. So under tweets it gives you this chart look at all of these impressions, all of these views on that day. It breaks down every single tweet. Impressions, engagements, and engagement rate. So impressions, that's just their term for views. That particular tweet got this number of views. Engagement is, was did it get a reply? Did it get a retweet? Uh, did it get a favorite? Someone engaged with it. And then you get a percentage. I believe it's just one divided by the other. And um, the percentage of how effective the tweet was, basically. So that one was 14% effective, that was 4%. Uh, so even though this one got more views, views are nice, but impression or uh, engagements are better. And that shows statistically. Again, okay, you can look at it yourself. There's lots to look at, but it's not super complicated, and there is a help. Um, there is a help feature at the top right under your account. You can look at help and support, and then that way you can get more knowledge about how this actually works and what it's telling you.
and break down your followers also. Here you'll see what their interests are. As people fill out their accounts, um, they're giving information to Twitter, to Google+, to Facebook, to Pinterest, etc. That then helps create market segments. I'm seeing here that tech people that are into technology and tech news and <coughs> business news are my top three Twitter followers. So if I continue to publish content that relates to them, I could then um, have more engagement. Conversely, I could look at what are the lowest ones so far and maybe try to target those with ads. We have Twitter ads as well. We can, we can promote a tweet. Uh, I won't quite get into it because we'll see the same sort of thing on Facebook in a little bit. But we can have a tweet and promote it. And the great thing about promoting a tweet is we can target. I can say, this tweet, I want it to be focused more to, to those that are interested in startups within a particular city and an age group. So then Twitter will use its algorithm to display your tweet to those people you've targeted. And the Twitter ads can range from, I think, as low as like a dollar up to you know, $10,000. So the more you spend, obviously, the more you reach, just like in the real world on radio, on, the, on, uh, on marketing in the real world. If you spend more on digital marketing, you'll reach more. But you can still do really well with a really modest budget. Yes? Can you target my zip code also with a Twitter? I don't want yeah. to Twitter. Yeah, you can actually. So like zip codes as well. You can do cities and zip codes, states and countries. Very fine-tuned and very general, too. And more than one. Two zip codes at once, for example. So again, knowledge is power, and using the... Uh, using the analytics features of the social networks, all the big ones have this. I showed you Google+, this is Twitter, we'll look at Facebook, um, when we talk about Pinterest eventually, next month, uh, that'll have it as well. Um, so, once you know what you need to do, or what you've done, that is, once you know what you've done, you can figure out what you need to do, you can figure out what has worked, keep doing it, or figure out novel ways to improve. So any questions on either of these insight platforms? Mm -hmm. So when it, said, when it was analyzing URL clicks, is, mm -hmm. does that necessarily mean your website, or does it just mean like the, what you're posting that's got a URL? You know, a link? What you've posted. So if you added a tweet and it had a link, then that shows that it's been clicked. Uh, and so if it's a link back to your website, then that's a traffic back to your website. If it's over to your some other social network, then it's to that network. Yes? How, when doing all these tweets and posting, how does that calculate into sales? Would you be able to say, well, this particular article affected, uh, or I got so many percentage of people looking at my, uh, my website, so how does this calculate into looking at that was effective as far as sales was concerned? Well, unfortunately, none of the social networks really can tell you that definitively. Mm -hmm. They can only tell you what's happening on their platform, mm -hmm. because the final step of that whole conversion process to get a sale <coughs> should happen on your website. So your website itself has analytics and statistics if you set it up with Google Analytics, Bing Analytics, etc. And so those analytics on your website will then fill in the last piece of the puzzle. This will only tell you that it went to your website to the Shop Now page. Right. This will tell you that this tweet went to that landing page. I got a thousand views to that landing page. That's as far as it can tell you. Okay. It cannot tell you about sales. You have to check your stats for your own site then mm -hmm. to see how much traffic came into that landing page and then went out the funnel to the actual sale. So maybe in the future it'll be much more integrated, but at the moment they can only tell you, you know, they can only say said that we led this horse to the water. Right. They can't tell you if it drank. Right. All right. So any last questions about this before we look at some more things? Yes. I have another question back on Google Plus again. Uh -huh. um, I've got a Google Plus personal page that I set up before my business page. Um, I find when I ask people to uh, follow me on my Google Plus page, they follow me personally. You know, and I, 
Is it just, oh, would it be a better strategy for me to just eliminate my personal Google Plus page so that people don't get mixed up when I'm talking with them? And, you know, they're very cooperative about following me, but they end up following me personally, which isn't what I want. Well, when you ask them to follow you, are you also leading that horse to water and saying, he, follow me here or follow me at this address? So just be more specific yeah. about that. Because it still would be useful to get those followers there because that's a captive audience and there's nothing wrong with then using that captive audience on your personal to say, hey, don't forget to follow us and one on business. And once they're your follower on personal, you could still tell them they're follow us on the business and they might do that. But try to be specific when you tell people to follow you. So hopefully, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but hopefully you want to claim your Google Plus name as soon as you can, your vanity name. You're going to be instead of very generic Google Plus slash 125795, whatever, until you claim your name. And that's found on your About screen. At a certain point, Google Plus will let you claim your, your, your URL. You won't be able to get it right away because they don't want spammers to steal a name. So you have to set up your Google Plus, add some content, use it for a little while, and then when you log back into Google Plus, back to your Google Plus page screen, under the About screen, you should have a spot under Link. or I, I think it even tells you right at the very top when you log in. It'll say, Claim your custom URL. If you want to do that as soon as you can, make sure it's spelled right, and then you'll have a nice shorter name, google.com slash plus swap dots. And that's where I'm directing people to follow me on Google+. Plus. All right, so let me back up a moment. This sounds great. I'm showing you these statistics, and it looks like this site is getting on its feet. Um, and uh, I'm seeing the stats over here. That's great. And we've been talking um, concretely about tweeting, and I've been giving advice. It still might seem pretty nebulous. What do I tweet? How do I tweet it? And all of that. So what I'm going to do is back up and give you this document that is going to be useful to develop a marketing strategy, because social media really is a marketing tool for us. And the concept of marketing still applies. It applies to the times of Mad Men. It applies to the times nowadays out in the real world. It applies to the digital world of social media as well. So let me give you this document. It's in our network folder. Go to your desktop. Minimize your window and go to the desktop. Double click the computer icon on the top left corner of the desktop. So we'll open the computer. In this uh, window here, you'll see a various hard drives and such. You will see uh, the network location section, and one should be called Classroom Data Drive Z, as in Zebra. When you see the Classroom Data Z, double-click that. You'll see a bunch of folders with a bunch of instructors' names. It's alphabetical, so scroll down to Campos. C-A-M-P-O-S Social. There's a folder in there. Double click on Campos Social. There's the syllabus from the first day if you still need it. And then there's a new document here. Don't double click any of these. You want to drag them out of my network folder into your desktop or flash drive if you brought one today. You want to select them and drag them to your desktop to copy them. Don't double click them in my folder because that's going to slow down the network. You want to drag them to your desktop and then from your desktop you can view it. You can print it but during the break because the printer is not easy. So drag a copy. If you already got the syllabus you don't need it again. But uh, get the client marketing uh, strategy. Drag that over to your desktop and then double click it. It's just a Word document. We'll look at it together briefly because this is more of a, um, of a discussion for my uh, SEO class. If you took my SEO class, this will be very familiar. But all of this is tied together. Social media, search engine optimization, web design, blogging, all of this is tied together. I teach about five or six classes that are all related to each other. There's no prerequisites for taking one or the other, um, but they all kind of interlock. This is not homework. I'm not saying fill this in and turn it in and I'll grade you. This is for your own purposes. I'll explain it in general, the document, 
And then I'll remind you that for more explanation and insight about this and other things, my SEO class is the class you want to take because I go there three or four or five weeks sometimes in depth about search engine optimization. And part of search engine optimization is what's known also as search engine marketing. You might have heard of SEO, search engine optimization. But now another important aspect is SEM, search engine marketing. And in short, that's just about using social media, that's about marketing, reaching an audience, capturing an audience, keeping an audience, marketing, S-E-M. So if you go to a class or read a tutorial, if you go to a seminar or whatever, and they start to talk about SEO and never talk about social media and blogging and such, that was not as effective as it could have been. Because nowadays it's about SEO and SEM, and also, sometimes you're hearing the term content marketing. SEO is the most famous term. Some of us more in the know might, have, might know about SEM. And now the more cutting edge word is content marketing. And it's all related. I have a website. No, it's all related. I want to sell. I want to sell a product, so therefore I need a website. I need traffic to my website, so I'm going to start to blog. I need more traffic to my website, I'm going to get on Twitter. And then all of that in the totality is going to ultimately lead me to make more sales. But it's not as easy, obviously, as I boil it down to. That's why there's these various classes I teach. But this document is basically something right out of my company's playbook. When we get hired by a company, there's an exploratory phase where we figure out as much as we can about them. My company needs to learn about their company so that we can get effective on social media. Because a company owner knows everything inside and out about their company. Not really, but they usually do. And then we need to know that. So what they don't know, they're also going to find out themselves through these various documents that we provide them. One of them I'm giving you right now. So this is the company, your company marketing strategy. Uh, you can put your name into it. You don't have to fill it out now, but you can fill this out, put a date, because it might change in the future as you learn more. So there's various large questions here with explanations and, ex and examples. Uh, if you're able to answer these questions as best as possible for your business, that is going to then inform your social media endeavors. That'll inform your marketing strategy, your plan for social media, not only social media, but for those radio ads you might think of doing, or the TV ads, or whatever, the marketing that you're thinking. So, what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something, build awareness, etc.? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence. It might be as simple as, I want, I want to sell my paintings. Great. Write that down. When you articulate these things, then you can better implement a plan and follow through. In this example here, Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. You might have just thought, yeah, I want to sell stuff. And that's a perfectly fine answer. Notice this one is much more detailed, and that comes from actually thinking about this and talking with the rest of the company shareholders or stakeholders and deciding on this fundamental question. Because if you say, yeah, I want to sell my paintings, are your paintings going to be then focused on a certain target audience? Uh, well, I never thought about that. Time to think about that. Who is your target audience? It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in your product, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product or follow you on Twitter? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style, etc.? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client, and that's a big thing in, 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 in marketing theory, marketing classes and such, uh, creating a persona. Don't think that I'm just going to tweet. Think that I'm going to tweet to Janet. I'm going to tweet to Bill. I'm going to tweet to real people, not just names. 
personas that you have defined. Janet is a 20-year-old, well-to-do, recent college graduate with some disposable income. So once you're creating uh, a persona, you can target Bill with those, with your tweets, your website, your content. Those radio ads that don't appeal to you at all are not trying to appeal to you. They're trying to appeal to the people that they're designed for then those people will follow through and follow that radio ads message. Do you have aspirational competition? It's good to have role models both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think I want to be like that or a business that makes you think I want to do that but better? List a company, person, brand, etc. that you feel is in competition with you but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.cofields at XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. So once you know your competition, you do some research. In that other class, the SEO class, we spend a day researching our competition. Because if you don't know what you're up against, you might be pushing up a big boulder up a steep hill. And so once you know your competition, you can figure out what are they doing. What can I do? What can I do better? What can I do differently? What can I strive for and eventually surpass? So who are you aspiring to be and then compete with and then overtake? Vision statement. In the other document that I won't give, but it's in the other class, we talked about a mission statement. In short, a mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon, five years, <clears throat> for example. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So this fictional company, Vic.co, does websites. We want to get more clients to do their websites, so we're going to get on social media and such. I mentioned previously we're going to try to get on Instagram and get an audience on Instagram. And then we're going to target restaurants. Our vision is that we're going to be well known for making websites for San Diego based restaurants, the most elegant ones, not the mom and pop shop ones. Maybe that would be a viable, uh, a viable audience, but perhaps with experience we know that the mom and pop shops are great, but they don't pay the same amount that the more higher end ones pay. So that's what we're going to target. And that's okay to be snobby. It's your business. You're trying to make money out of it, hopefully. So I'm targeting that audience. I can easily then target, we will be uh, known for providing web design for the local small businesses and restaurants. Great. Then go at it and do the best that you can for that uh, target audience. And then there's the USP, which will help get you there, the unique selling proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is, why would a client hire you or work with you or care about your product? Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. In that SEO class, I go into more detail about this very important question of why. There's a very good book that you might want to look into. I believe it's called Start With Why. Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Uh, you can get the digital book, audio book, there's a lec video lecture about it and everything, but it's Start With Why. And that's a deeper book about marketing and effective marketing. Um, and it's talking about answering the question of why. It's theoretical and practical and such, but it, it really, really boils down to about why would a customer buy something from you? Why would a potential customer become a customer? And it goes on to explain about how the big companies that are that are profitable and famous and and have loyalty answer the question effectively of why, not just because they have a good product. Um, for example, Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola—they're both, 
you know, sugary drinks, sugary carbonated drinks that have lots and lots of profits, but maybe one is more profitable than the other because it's answered the question of why would I want to drink Pepsi as opposed to Coke or Coke as opposed to Pepsi. It spends, those companies spend millions of dollars, if not billions, creating marketing campaigns to convince you why to drink our sugar drink. And so for your own company, you also have to think about why would someone buy my wristbands? Why would someone buy my stuffed animals? Why would someone hire me as a realtor? Why? What kind of connection can you create with the customer? And in my example here, I'm trying to forge a connection by saying, we are San Diego residents. We are San Diego natives. We graduated from local colleges. We live here. We want to work with San Diego-based companies. We know the San Diego culture. <clears throat> we know that you can get a much cheaper web design, uh, outsource it overseas, or maybe a really good web design studio in LA or New York or Seattle or whatever. But we are here in San Diego. We're part of San Diego. We grew up in San Diego. We believe San Diego. So did your company. So we want to provide you with a product, a great website. Why? Because we can do a great job. We're local culture. We understand San Diego. We know the ins and outs just like you. And so that's a hard question to answer. Why? That's why there's a whole book on it and lectures and more. There's a free 18-minute lecture about that concept. So if we're only talking about how to use Twitter, how to tweet, how to set up Facebook, that's not answering why. That's just answering how. And you can learn that easily on any tutorial. The why is a much more complex thing. And that's why I'm giving you this document for you to think about these deeper issues. Because how to tweet is easy. You can learn that much faster than I'm teaching it. But the why is a deeper question. And I talk about some of the why in this class, but really I talk more about it in the SEO class. Um, so I think it's better to divide up these concepts into multiple classes because you're going to get overwhelmed in one class if I try to fit in four concepts into one class. But if you have the time to take four separate classes, if you miss it this month, no problem. It'll probably come back next month or in two months. These five classes are cycling over and over and over throughout the semesters. It's very theoretical, but any questions on this document? You might need to read it and digest it a bit and then maybe have questions next time or through email. But I give you this document as a starting point to think about your marketing efforts to answer, well, what, what am I going to tweet is related to why am I going to tweet. So we're going to take our first break here. Maybe you can print this out if you'd like, digest it a bit. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll start to get into Facebook. We'll set up a profile, business profile, if you don't have one. And if you do, then we'll get right away into setting it up effectively and using it.